Have you ever wondered how players like Buga, Benji, Fishy, and Mangra are consistently placing well event after event? From season to season and throughout the past FNCS events, players of this caliber have managed to consistently place regardless of the current meta. Why is this? What's going on guys? This is not your ordinary guy. No, this is your motivation guy. I was born to motivate you. And today, I'm gonna be showing you all the best ways that you can rotate in this new season, how to conserve materials, and some cool new tricks that you probably never heard of before. Okay, so rotating is by far one of the most important things to master in the realm of competitive Fortnite. With mobility consistently changing with each new season, your ability to adapt to change and be an efficient rotator will be with without a doubt, a determinant in how you will place an event for that season. Okay, so whether it's a map change, addition, or removal of a mobility item, your ability to master rotations with each new season is equally important to the previous one. ProGuides.com understands this. That's why our analysts are a click away from helping you master your rotations this season. Bunch of crunch army, it's about that time. Say it with me, here we go. It's time to sit back, relax, and grab some of my favorite candy. What is that, y'all? It's that bunch of crunch. Woo! And let's get this going. All right, so the first step to mastering rotations is to understand all of the rotational items and vehicles that are available to you, all right? In season three, cars were introduced. This was a completely new mechanic to Fortnite, and as a result, they made the decision not to include them in season three competitive modes and events. In season four, this is a really big change. You will now find cars in a variety of different locations around the map. Although this won't impact late game rotations for the most part, it's a very viable option while rotating mid and early game. Cars protect you from incoming enemy fire and allow for faster rotates over long distances. In turn, you have a longer time to loot if you are landing at a spot where cars are available, as well as not being tagged nearly as much mid-game while rotating, which will, in turn, have more healing items in your inventory. Another rotational vehicle that was introduced in one of the previous seasons is the helicopter. Okay, so in previous seasons, helicopters were only available in unrated modes. In season four, as of early September, they have elected to put helicopters into competitive modes as well. There are currently six helicopter spawns on the map, and although spawn rate of helicopters is unclear at this point, it is evident that there is not a 100% spawn rate in competitive modes. The final rotational vehicle that is used in a similar way like cars is boats. Boats have been in the game since the start of chapter two, and their use remains consistent in season four. All right, guys, next up, we have a new set of mythic items. It is important to note that at this point in time, not all of the mythic items have been released. With that being said, here are the newly introduced mythic items that will be very versatile when rotating in competitive modes. This season is Marvel themed, and thus far, three of these items will assist in rotates. Although it is unclear at this time how many of each mythic item will be on the map at any given time, they can be found in one of the Quinjets distributed throughout the map, as well as in the Dooms Domain POI. All right, so the first mythic item is the Groot Bramble Shield. The Groot Bramble Shield wraps you up into a ball and blocks incoming enemy fire. This item has similar mechanics to ballers in past seasons. This item has a 25 second cooldown after every use, so you gotta use it wisely. Another rotational mythic item that was introduced is the Silver Surfer Board. Just like the Groot Bramble Shield, all right, this Silver Surfer Board can be found on one of the Quinjets around the map. This item can be used once every 25 seconds seconds and is essentially a launch pad with the glider redeploy after the boost occurs. Both of these mythic items, similar to the mythic items of previous seasons, are extremely viable to you. All right, guys, so the final mythic item that can be used in rotating is Dr. Doom's Arcane Gauntlet. This item can be found at the Doom's Domain. Although this item can be used to do damage to players, there is also a double jump ability that prevents you from taking fall damage. This feature can be very beneficial while rotating in the later parts of games. Again, it is also worth mentioning that as of early September, Epic Games has not released any of this information regarding if mythic items will be in the loot pool for upcoming events, but looking at the previous season, we're gonna assume that they are. All right, finally, we have mobility items. On top of the mythic items, in season four, there are a variety of reintroduced items that will be extremely beneficial to rotating in this season. 
the first new item that we're going to be discussing is bouncers all right bouncers were introduced back in chapter one and were a staple in the competitive scene during their time in the loophole bouncers can be held in your trap slot after finding them at various floor spawns or drops and can be placed on any of your walls all right bouncers send you flying across the map without taking fall damage all right next up we have shock wave grenades this item, similarly to the bouncer, was also introduced in Chapter 1 and was a featured item during World Cup 2019. This grenade takes up an inventory slot and can be thrown on the ground, propelling you in the direction of your choosing and allow you to land without taking fall damage. The last new addition in Season 4 is Rifts. As of early September, there are currently two rift locations on the map, but there is speculation across the community that this number will increase in the near future. When a player enters a rift, they spawn towards the top of the map and have the ability to pull out their glider to rotate. This is a very viable rotational option in early zones to move across large distances. After discussing the new additions to Season 4, let's now take a look at the returning items. The two returning items are peppers and crash pads. All right, so if you're a returning player from season three, you know how big of a staple these two items were when rotating. These will be equally important in season four. Peppers can be found in a variety of locations throughout POIs, typically in what looks like food shelves inside buildings and can be stored in one's inventory. Crash pads, on the other hand, can be found in chests, floor spawns, and supply drops, and also be stored in one's inventory. With the removal of launch pads in Season 4, crash pads are even more important to house in your inventory. These items can be used in a variety of ways. Peppers are a very good item to use early in the game, rotating into the first and second zone. Not only can you loot for longer since the pepper increases your speed, crash pads, on the other hand, are better used later in the game to rotate over short distances. Okay, so now that we all understand the resources available to us, we gotta dive into the realm of rotating. The first aspect of your gameplay that you need to master to become the best rotator possible is to properly evaluate zone densities. All right, so in competitive Fortnite, unlike public matches, the zone densities are a little less defined. Typically in a public match, the first POI the bus goes over is considered the hot drop. This POI generally has a large chunk of players that drop there at the start of the match. This differs from competitive Fortnite lobbies, all right? So in competitive games, the population of players is significantly more distributed across the entirety of the map, making zone densities harder to evaluate. When evaluating zone densities and deciding on where to rotate, there are a couple of things to consider. So after the first zone pops, you need to identify what area of the zone is going to be the least dense when it fully closes. For example, if the zone is mainly occupying the top right portion of the map, steamy stacks would be the least dense. And agency or lazy lakes would be the most dense density is determined by how many players will be in that arena okay if there are a lot of players on that side of the zone it's considered high density if there aren't very many players on a specific side of the zone it's considered low density or in the competitive fortnite community dead side of the zone as a player your goal should always be to get to the dead side of each zone to allow for an easier rotation into the following zone Okay, so the final step to becoming the best rotator possible is to develop a game plan going into each game. This can include a variety of things, including adding a Quinjet into your loot path to potentially get one of the new mythical items, landing at a POI that frequently has peppers, or even making a pregame decision to carry double mobility in your inventory instead of double heals. All right, so no matter what your plan is, it's important to have one. An example of this would be if you're landing at a POI towards the outside of the map and don't pull the first zone you have to be aware of the mobility options around you so you can adequately assess you know when you should leave if you are landing at a POI such as Sweaty Sands where there are rifts nearby, you can look a lot longer than someone landing at the island outside of Misty Meadows. Not all of your planning can be done pre-game either, like some of your planning must happen during the game. Alright, let me tell you this, like if you need to rotate into the first moving zone and you have peppers and bounce pads in your inventory, you need to have a plan to rotate to that zone. If the zone plays uphill, you will most likely elect to use your bouncer to ensure that you can effectively scale the elevation. If the rotation is flat and you are on an uncongested layer, you may elect to use your pepper. A major aspect of rotating in Fortnite is really making calculated decisions and evaluating 
evaluating variables such as the number of people alive, you know, elevation change, terrain change, and layer congestion. This aspect, guys, is something that really just comes with time. Rotating is by far one of the most important aspects of becoming a professional Fortnite player and finding yourself placing at the top of every leaderboard. By taking the time to understand your rotational items and vehicles, properly identifying zone densities, and going into each game with a game plan, oh my goodness, you're gonna find yourself up there in no time. All right, guys, once again, this is your motivation guide. Make sure to connect with me on my Insta at your motivation guide. That is it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed a bit about, you know, how to become the best rotator in chapter two, season four. If you're struggling to master this concept, head on over to our website, proguys.com, where the best coaches in the Fortnite community can guide you through this process, all right? The players, you know, that are consistently the best rotators are the players that we constantly see on top of the leaderboards. Either way, let me know what tip you found most helpful and what you want to see more you know in videos such as these make sure to leave a like comment and uh you know obviously sub to the channel man because you don't want to miss out on all that we got coming out bunch of crunch army keep eating that bunch of crunch and let's get this going